medieval warm period. They searched the world, getting data from other proxies. Like corals from the Red Sea. And ancient layers of snow from the mountains of Peru. And then they had to add in the recent thermometer records. Combining the different numbers to reconstruct global temperatures is a fiendishly difficult task. It needs a kind of statistical analysis that makes my head hurt. Michael Mann put all the numbers together and used it to create a very special graph. And here it is. It's basically a graph of temperature over the last 1,000 years. And the first thing that hits you is there's virtually no sign of the medieval warm period. I mean, the skeptics would have a big bump in temperature just here when the world got warmer. Instead, it looks like for at least 900 years, give or take a few ups and downs, it's incredibly flat. It's not until you get to the 20th century and bang. Temperatures shoot up in a way it's unlike anything we've seen for at least a millennia. Now this graph tells a very different story from the skeptics. They say the present temperatures have nothing special. This graph says the opposite. The simplicity of this graph makes it a really powerful image. And it's even been given its own name, the hockey stick. It became one of the most famous and controversial graphs in science. It was so dramatic that it became an icon, an instantly recognisable symbol of man-made climate change. Al Gore even used it in his Oscar-winning movie. Not surprisingly, skeptics hated it. They said the hockey stick was a fiction because there was virtually no trace of the medieval warm period. They accused Mann of using faulty data and dodgy statistics to rewrite history. The hockey stick still provokes strong reactions today. What was your reaction when you see that? It's probably the most famous graph in the world, isn't it? But I think, what a shame. What a shame that, that a scientific scandal like this would, would be perpetuated on the American public That's and on the United strong. Nations. It's a scandal. It's a scandal. It's absolutely outrageous. This has even been discredited by the National uh, Academy of Sciences. They said it was unsupportable. When you see this, what, what goes through your mind now? Well, the first thing is uh, uh, great disbelief. Scientists are always bitching with each other. I've been at a conference when someone said, you know nothing about your subject, but they, they kind of enmity that it's been directed at Michael Mann as something else. Some even accused him of the ultimate scientific crime, fraud. If it's fraud, they should be in jail. If, if, it, if it was incompetence, they should be fired. I never expected the sort of uh, attacks that we were subject to when I began this work. This was clearly, and I'm going to say it bluntly, deliberately bent. If you can't win your argument on the basis of science, you try to win based on uh, defamation, of slander, of um, uh, rhetoric um, that sounds convincing but has no basis in fact. I would say it's as close to scientific fraud as you can get. Michael Mann was attacked in print and even more viciously on the web. Entire websites were set up to pick holes in the hockey stick. But whilst the skeptics were busy attacking Mann, other researchers were doing their own science, hunting for more proxies and using different methods to work out past temperatures. Soon, Michael Mann's graph was joined by many others, all reconstructing the past 1,000 years of temperature. The question was, would they back up Michael Mann or would they prove him wrong? You know, it might look 
confusing, but this graph has a really clear message. The red line is Michael Mann's original hockey stick graph. It's very flat with hardly any medieval warm period. The other lines are the reconstructions that have been done since. Now there's a big spread. In other words, scientists disagree about a lot of the temperatures in here. That's not really surprising, because working out the temperatures for the past few hundred years is a really difficult task. It largely depends on what indications you use. But the crucial part is over here. This is 1000 AD. Now some of the reconstructions show temperatures a little warmer than man's curve. And some of them also show got into much colder conditions at the end of the medieval warm period. What that probably means is that Michael Mann underestimated some of the variation in the past 1,000 years. In other words, the hockey stick is a little bit too straight. But it depends on the reconstruction you use. What these lines all agree on, though, is one thing. There is no evidence of any period in the past 1,000 years that's as warm as the second half of the 20th century. In other words, the end of the 20th century really is unprecedented. Once again, the sceptical attacks have made the science stronger. We now have a whole hockey team's worth of graphs. They make a very convincing case that the global warming detected by the thermometers and satellites really is unusual. But the skeptics said that still doesn't prove that humans are to blame. They had one more line of scientific attack. They said global warming has nothing to do with carbon dioxide. So leave those smokestacks and gas guzzlers alone. It was all the fault of the sun. Of course the sun influences climate. The sun is a source of all weather. Every storm, every shower, every breath of wind is ultimately driven by the sun. The skeptics argued that since the Earth's climate is so dependent on the sun, it would only take small changes in the sun's behaviour to have a big effect on the climate. The key was sunspots. These dark patches are magnetic storms on the surface of the sun. They're constantly changing. Which is why the skeptics believed they could reveal the true cause of climate change. This observatory has been measuring sunspots since 1881 and this is how they do it. The, the dome moves around till it gets in the direction of the sun, the roof opens and then the sun comes down this telescope here and projects onto this sheet of paper. Now, I'm not putting my eye up here because if I did, this is what would happen. The sun, just like a big magnifying glass, just sets fire to the leaf. But anyway, listen, so what you do is, rather than putting your eye there, you put a bit of paper there. Now, you have to adjust it because our sun has to be sitting right in the middle. Focus a little. You then, you then draw on the position Oh, the sunspots. We've got two today. Okay. These spots may look tiny, but each one is half the size of the Earth. And this is a relatively quiet sun. At other times, it has more spots, sometimes dozens of them. This is what scientists call an active sun. And at these times, the sun sends out huge waves of charged particles called a solar wind. <laughs> 